Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, got Stacy and Chris with me. Shalom. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we are wishing everybody a happy New Moon Day and Remembrance Day. Day of Remembrance Day, New Moon Day. The first day of winter. So we have a lot going on today. Today is a very special day on the sacred celestial calendar on our father's calendar and in today's video we're going to be talking about what that all means as far as the calendar we're going to be addressing the seasonal day or the day of remembrance okay now we're looking here at the calendar for the 10th month because we were able to visualize and verify the new moon on last evening december the 24th that makes December the 25th the first day of the month. All right. Y'all just did a class on that, didn't you? That's right. There were still some questions on how the sacred calendar works as far as the month goes. And we used several verses from the scripture to reprove that the month actually starts with the new moon. Mm -hmm. Like we see over here in Ezekiel chapter 46 and 1, comparing two different translations. We see that one calls it the first day of the month, while in a different translation, it calls it the new moon. So they're the same thing. Absolutely the same thing. And another verse I'll pull out right quick is over in 1 Samuel and chapter 20, where in verse 24, we see that David hid from Saul on the new moon day in verse 24. And then down in verse 25, the day after that is referred to as the second day of the month. And like I said, we covered that in our video on how a new moon always starts with a new month. But now that we're in the 10th month, we're also talking about the seasonal day. We read about it, that over in the book of Jubilees and chapter 6 in one place. Matter of fact, Stacy, would you read that? And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month are the days of remembrance, and the days of the seasons in the four divisions of the year. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever. Forever. So we're always supposed to remember these days. When you go on to read the rest of this chapter, it says that if you don't reckon your calendar in this manner, you will go astray as far as the feast days, as far as the Sabbath days, you'll lose track of the Sabbath days, you'll even lose track of the years. You just won't know what year we're in. Mm -hmm. And you'll go after the era of the Gentiles. Right. Another place that talks about this day of remembrance is the book of Enoch, where it's called the seasonal day. Matter of fact, Stacy, would you start reading there at about verse 4? Blessed are all the righteous. Blessed are all who walk in righteousness, in whom no crime is found, as in sinners, when all their days are numbered. With respect to the progress of the sun in heaven, it enters and goes out of each gate for 30 days. With the leaders of the thousands of classes of the stars, with four which are added, and appertain to the four quarters of the year which conduct them and accompany them at four periods. So it's talking about these four days which are added here. Mm -hmm. It's also talking about the geometric circle, how the periods of the sun are 30 days of peace. But notice that it doesn't call the months there. We find out that the months are related to the moon like we talked about in that other class. Here is talking about the periods of the sun being 30 days each. But when you multiply 30 times 12, you end up with what? 360. 360, which is the geometric circle, right? right. Three, 360 degrees. Now, those who weren't aware of the sacred calendar like the Egyptians back in the old days, this presented problems because by empirical evidence, they realized that the year was more like 365 days while the geometric circle was only 360 degrees so what they did to resolve that was they just added five days at the end of each year those were five extra days they just stuck in 
So between the last day of the year and the first day of the year, there were five more days that weren't up there otherwise. Five more days that, you know, they did special things and allowed you to get away with different stuff. They actually didn't count as real days. Mm. So it was kind of weird. We see that in uh, Britannica.com on the Egyptian calendar. But the thing about it, they weren't using Enoch because Enoch tells us how those days are supposed to be added. Matter of fact, Stacy, would you go on? Respecting these, men greatly err, and do not calculate them in the calculation of every age, for they greatly err respecting them, nor do men know accurately that they are in the calculation of the year. Right, so instead of adding them at the end, they are calculated throughout the years, what he's telling us here. Mm -hmm. But indeed, these are marked down forever. One in the first gate, one in the third, one in the fourth, and one in the sixth. So that the year is completed in 364 days. So here Enoch is telling us what to do. The right. Egyptians, like we said, didn't have this information or they would have knew that those days were not supposed to be added at the end of the year, but to be added one at the end of each season. Exactly. Like we read over in the book of Jubilees, we were supposed to have one in the first month, one added in the fourth month, one added in the seventh month, and one of those seasonal days added in the tenth month. But notice over here how Enoch, while he's talking about the sun, is speaking on the gates instead of the months. Mm -hmm. That's important to know. We covered in another class because when we put these two together, we're able to know exactly when these seasonal days are supposed to be added. So we can actually see this illustrated on the celestial clock calendar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is the calendar that you created based off the book of Enoch. Praise our Father in heaven. He gave us the instruction. Chris and I, back in February of 22, on how to actually illustrate or use a standard analog clock to recreate or visualize the celestials and how they work. So this clock has a feature on it that shows the days of remembrance as well as the gates, right? Absolutely. And looking on here at where we're at beginning this 10th month, we see that we entered gate one after the winter solstice and now that we have the confirmation of the moon telling us that we're in the 10th month we know that it's actually time to add that day that seasonal day that day that we're talking about the enoch said was to be added in the first gate and moses said was to be added in the 10th month now that we have verified the sighting of the new moon we could go ahead and update our calendars and that is for those who have this celestial calendar. And for those who do not, you can purchase them at coachingthefight.shop. That's right. For those who actually have this version of the calendar on sunset of December the 24th, your calendar would have looked like this. Instead of the moon hand aligning with the sighting of the new moon, it appears to be a day off or a day behind. Right. And that's what Enoch and Moses was talking about, we have to actually add this day to the celestial clock calendar every season to keep our clocks aligned. Once again, and for those who haven't requested an update to their faceplate, you can do so and it's free of charge just by emailing us and requesting a new faceplate. Yeah, we don't have all of you guys' addresses or we would just go ahead and just send you one out. but. They're available through email, like Stacy says, or you could go to coachingthefight.shop and purchase one. So with the Egyptians getting it wrong and Enoch and Moses right, of course, this information would have been passed down from Enoch to Moses. Is that correct? Absolutely. Those same writings would have traveled with the Israelites while they were in Egypt. And so it's likely that Moses had those documents when he was building the tabernacle and such. But let's show them how it'll look when they update the clock. Like we said, at sunset on December the 24th, the clock would have appeared to be a day behind. And for those who knew to do so, 
when the new moon was verified on the evening of December the 24th, they would have pushed their clock to the new moon position, adding that day back to the celestial calendar. Mm -hmm. Simply by rotating the knob on the back until it aligned with the new moon position. But many of us miss that. In fact, most of us that are watching this video, so we're going to have to push our clocks a little bit ahead to catch up to where we're at now. This is the way it would have looked at sunrise on December the 25th. And if you wait till sunset on December the 25th, the moon hand on your clock will point between the one and the two. But if you wait till sunrise on December the 26th, it will be pointing right to the two just like that. And it's important to note that you can actually set it any way that you understand. Mm -hmm. So if I requested a faceplate and received it a week from now, I will do the same thing and just move the hand forward. Is that correct? So that I will be accurate um, for the next date. Like if you received your faceplate in the mail on the 5th, mm -hmm. which would be about December the 29th. Mm -hmm. Well, since the mail runs in the middle of the day, what you'll probably do is wait until sunset when the next day begins and to go ahead and align your clock up to begin the sixth day of the month. If you received it on the fifth, you could just set it on that day or whenever you receive it. Mm -hmm. But I do stress that it is important to get this faceplate, whether you purchase one or request one for free, because what we've learned since we created this clock is that the Gregorian calendar dates don't match up. If your clock face has Gregorian calendar dates on it, like January and February and so forth, you're going to have to get an updated faceplate in order for it to work correctly. Because otherwise, if you try to line them both up together, then you'll end up getting neither. Or you'll end up doing something like the Egyptians and just having to add odd days and random places and different stuff. And you won't actually have a celestial clock calendar. Which kind of reminds me of the Muslim calendar, which is also a lunar calendar. But because they don't take into consideration the day of remembrance. Or the sun at all. Right. Their months actually change each year. And they come in 10 days too early. They don't, in other words, they don't push their clock ahead. They don't add those extra days every three months. That's why their festival days like Ramadan falls 10 days earlier each year. This year is on April the 2nd. And then the next year is about 10 days earlier on March the 23rd. And then the next year is on March 11th. That's what Moses was talking about in Jubilees chapter 6 and verse 36 where it says there will be those who will assuredly make observations of the moon, how it disturbs the seasons and comes in year to year, 10 days too soon. Mm -hmm. So this again is why we have to make this adjustment to our calendars every year. This is just the way our calendars work. So the Gregorian calendar and the sacred calendar just doesn't fit together. Well, they're not compatible at all because the Gregorian calendar is based strictly on the sun, just like the Muslim calendar is based strictly on the moon. The Gregorian calendar is based strictly on the sun and neither one of them will stay consistent or stay accurate over time. That's why we have a Gregorian calendar at all is because it had to be updated since it drifted over time. I think somewhere in that lesson is a sermon for a pastor when he's going to preach how um, the most high ways and the man's ways just don't match together. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, they're in direct <laughs> conflict. Everything about it, you know, that's what the education system is all about, is to educate us into man's way of doing things, else we would, by default, go to our father's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And they're actually completely opposite in many cases. I think one of the things that we've also seen since learning about the days of remembrance is how uh, these seasonal days sort of speak for themselves. One of the things that we watch out for is how there seems to be a change in the weather. For Say for instance, um, all of a sudden it's hot and then all of a sudden there's like 
horrific rain a rain shower and just just so happens to be that's when the day of spring or summer is coming in it seems as if as it seems as if these days are announcing themselves yeah our well, father gives us signs about his calendar he's doing everything he can to keep us on track including allowing us to even create this clock and like i said you guys can get it at coachingthefight.shop where chris and stacy can actually make you one and get it shipped out but if you need help getting one just let me know send me an email to coachingthefight at inthefight at yahoo.com if you're having trouble purchasing one and maybe i can help you get one but anyway if you got any questions or anything please put them in the comment section below and remember to blow your trumpets for the new moon and have a happy blessed day of remembrance and winter season and with that we're gonna say shalawama shalawama